two female judges shot dead in Kabul as wave of killings continues. Here's a summary of the article. Gunmen have shot dead two female Supreme Court judges during an early morning ambush in Kabul, according to officials, as a wave of assassinations continues to rattle Afghanistan. The attack happened as they were traveling to their office in a court vehicle on Sunday, said Ahmed Fahim Kawim, a court spokesman. Unfortunately we have lost two women judges in today's attack. Their driver is wounded, Kawim said. The vehicle was transporting the women judges to their office. They were among more than 200 female judges working for the country's top court, the spokesman said. They were judges working for the Supreme Court, said Jamshid Rasuli, spokesman for the Attorney General's office. The latest attack comes two days after the Pentagon announced it had cut troop levels in Afghanistan to 2,500 the lowest level during the nearly two decades of war. This post received a score of 48,000, with an upvote ratio of 94%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. This is going to get a lot worse. I saw a news report the other day that estimated the Taliban has 60,000 full-time fighters. I don't think they keep them on the payroll just to provide security. Apparently, and now after reading it, I remember it being the news, Russia and Iran have been providing payments to the Taliban for attacks. It was buried in the news because you can't mention Russia without people screaming fake news. Wow, that makes them about half as big as the British Army. Really puts things into perspective. You got me curious and Britian, as of 2020, has 78,000 full-time soldiers WIRH 33,000 reserve. It is crazy Taliban has so many. That is a huge wage load. Are the Taliban's finances that much recovered from 2018? Something tells me they're paid in more than cash. Not arguing that but a big piece of ISIS collapse was an attack on their finances. You can't recruit enough zealots to fill the ranks. Somebody must be funding them then. Iran, China, Pakistan, Russia maybe. IIRC their man financial engine is opium production and oil. That said my data is circa 2016 to 2019. And between the oil glut and synthetic opioids, that would mean they are super pinched. How they can be recruiting those numbers, gotta be something else going on. Also Russia and Taliban have bad blood but they might use an intermediary. Even before synthetic opioids like fentanyl analogs, became the dominant force they have become, opium production for the West Coast as far as the Midwest had largely been supplanted by BTH, from Mexico and other Latin American countries. Four and number five heroin, are typically only found on the East Coast and Europe, who consume far, far less heroin than Americans. This is of course ignoring those in the West who order number four and number five from the dark markets and then distribute it, but that's just a blip on the radar, so to speak. I believe they pretty much flood Africa with heroin these days, because Syria route is no go. At least that's what YouTube told me X. Over 40 years of occupation, civil war and violence. Bleak. 40 years. You could have just as easily written 400. No. It was peaceful before 1979 for multiple decades. Edit. This comment has blown up and many responses to me and other comments in this thread wrongfully assume that we were once less religious and that we only began our problems once religion became more common. Afghanistan has always been a very religious country, whether now, 20, 50, or 100 years ago. Our main problems are not at all religious in nature. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.